Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our, oh, what would we call it, uh, What's Next for Ireland video. Uh, yeah, because, no you know, um, the current just, Ireland. sorry? <laughs> no bitchery to the current Ireland setup. Yeah, well basically we've got Kieran McGuire was coming in on the show. Steve's here as always. Uh, we've got John Higgins from the ARW podcast. Did the official ARW like, on Twitter? Twitter. Can we not just do like Johnny's here? Like, he's, he's always here. <laughs> Oh, we can, uh, whatever, whatever works. He's a regular. The regular. Um, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. This yeah. is your hat trick, Johnny, isn't it? Four. Four. Yeah. You'll be, you be able to have your names on the desk. Like, yeah, I'll soon do a testimony, I think. Yeah, I'll put the book out. Really so so if you're doing that testimony, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll get the tape out of that cool program. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so that's like. What's going on? Like it's been about two weeks now. That's two weeks today. It's like it was two weeks to get around to this video for the pure <laughs> fact that no one really wanted to speak about yeah. it for a little while. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> At the same time, there's been no announcement. There's been no nothing in terms of Martin O'Neill, uh, the FAI. The only thing is, Martin O'Neill's been heavily linked with the um, Everton job. Everton job. Uh, two two uh, reports. Johnny's in the know apparently. Oh, so the, so the rumors tell me. Um, yeah, uh, and the fact that. You know, we're having that discussion. I think summarizes exactly where we're at, where we are now at the moment. Because you consider it's a manager that's just recently signed a new contract, mm. and there's talks that they didn't sign the new contract. Well, it was never signed. It was rarely agreed, but yeah. rarely agreed. He's <laughs> <laughs> being in a real cut off mood tonight, isn't he? <laughs> Clutching on straws, mate. Will I? But um, the fact that that we're in the we're in the situation where. He's heavily linked, whether there's any truth in it or not, he was heavily linked to a job and everyone kind of, nobody went, oh no, please don't go. That for me speaks volumes of the situation that we're in and to say we're at a crossroads is a complete understatement because we really are, it's, there's a, there's a lot of, I know there's a, there's, we have a bit of time, it's been two weeks since the game or whatever, but, two weeks today. Yeah, but, but no, all we have is questions, what's going to happen, is he going to stay, you know, um, his press conference after the game with Tony O'Donoghue showed an angry, bitter man. Um, but he's like that after every defeat. Oh, but that, that was. Uh, I think I think I, I, I think he he took it to a whole new level. Yeah. And then the the article he wrote or was written about him, and um, by his good journal uh, buddy a couple of days later, where it kind of took a little bit of a swipe back. So all he say is all is in rosy in the camp and. The fact that we're having a discussion now about does he stay, uh, I think speaks volumes where we are. Well, do you not like see it from his point of view as well? Like clearly, after losing five one, like I'll touch on it with you, Karen, because you're a coach, right? You lose five one in a game of that stature, you're clearly going to be pissed off. And the last thing you want is is a fella come up in your face with a camera. And are you going to stay on? Are you going to stay on? I thought some of the Tony Donahue's questions were disingenuous and. I thought I thought they were really tough to be asked to start the game mm -hmm. at the end of the game because he's done that before with the fellow who's no 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 key as well. Like he made he made a comment. He said, "Why did you put uh, Kevin Doyle in the left?" No, mm -hmm. that, no, that that's not that was when No Kelly was was the manager. But, but Kevin okay. Doyle played that in the left for his club. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is like. Some of the some of the questions, do you know what I mean? He 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 was he was kind of uh, contradicting himself. Do you know what I mean? He was at, he was saying, right, okay, so you're losing the half times, so you have to go for it. Um, and he goes, yes, yeah, so we changed it to this, this, this. Why did you do that? Because we had to go for it. And he says, well, we made these mistakes in the second half. He says, well, that's because we were going for it. We had to change it. And then he said, he said, all right, but they, that's not characteristic of us because. You, you just have to ask me why do why are we yeah, no, I get all that. Do you know I what I mean? I, get like, all that. I just felt I just feel at times like the just journal, journalists and things like that who just don't understand the game and if you ask some questions sometimes that are just like it's more so for the agenda of RTE or do you know what I mean, for the panel of yeah, well, the, 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 that, the, you know the, what I mean? The like, panel is, is a dinosaur panel at this rate really and, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's it's just yeah. a, it's it's just a comedy factor like yeah. The, the the lack of knowledge uh, of the modern game is simply ridiculous, and they just mm -hmm. have two or three people that they pick. You know, we've had Andy Reid, we've Hulan, etc., etc., where they just get a bee in the bonnet and they'll come out and they'll try to. They just try to be controversial. I used to enjoy it a couple of years ago. It was kind of funny at the time, but I'm just sick and tired and bored of now. It's 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 just lazy and 
a lot of the time, as you said, they don't really understand it. I don't think they understand the modern game anymore. See, that, see I kind of I disagree with the kind of Tanya Donahue part of maybe his questions weren't fair on Anil after well, the game. Because, really <laughs> because I think Anil has paid a lot of money and he's in a position of like that put like that public image that he has to uphold and like he has to answer for a defeat and he shouldn't be allowed after losing five one in the most important game we've had for quite a, quite a long time and I put it in both the two Bosnia games for the Euros because yes qualifying for the Euros is great and everything but the World Cup is a level up from that again we've not qualified since two thousand and two he was employed to get us there and he didn't get us there. So, in the immediate aftermath, he should have to answer for that. He shouldn't be able to go, oh no, I'm sad because we lost, so don't answer me, or I'm not going to answer those questions, and I'm going to be, you know, snappy with Tommy O'Donoghue. Because he's snappy with O'Donoghue regardless of the result. He still, he doesn't like Tommy O'Donoghue, it's, it's obvious. And he was just... So Even surely the RTA should go and get another person too. No, because Tommy O'Donoghue's doing his job. He's doing a perfect job. He's doing nothing wrong. But he answered the questions. If you watch it over, he answered every single question. But Tony Dunne kept backtracking over what he was saying. He kept backtracking over Yeah, because I think on the end was trying to dodge the question. I was in the press conference straight after that. Hmm. Chatting about Dunne, he was doing the exact same thing. He was hmm. answering the questions. He wasn't going, no comment. But he wasn't answering the questions. He was kind of saying, oh, it was oh, a mistake, blah, blah, blah. Why did you make that mistake? Why didn't you bring on this player? Why didn't you bring on that player? Why, why did you lose the balance and everything in midfield at half time by bringing on two attackers? And he doesn't. He doesn't answer these questions. He just goes, "Oh, it was a mistake." Like that. He, if I went into a jo- if I went into my job and messed up that badly and said, "Oh, sorry, it was a mistake," I'd be sacked. Yeah, but th- well, my point is is the fact that. <coughs> Clearly, he's pissed off enough as it is. Do you know what I mean? It's just, but it, it's, it's not no lack of passion. In it. He's clearly, you know, pissed off that we didn't win. He did get a fantastic result away from him. Nil nil was a fantastic result. I don't care what anybody says. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah. So you know, you can see if I haven't coached myself in the past. You can see both sides. He's clearly pissed off. The fans are clearly pissed off. Everyone was pissed off. But the thing I'm talking about now is, regardless of that. Do you see any way back from that after that? Yeah, I don't. It's difficult. Um, particularly, I think the the, the the interview with Tony Dunham is a bit off the cuff. You know, you you can you can look at that just the emotion after the game, things were said, etc. I think it was just that in its own. You could just wipe it under the carpet. It for me, it's the follow-on article the next couple of days where he's playing the victim card. I think that to me shows a little bit of a sign where you know. Things aren't rosy here, and there's a lot of stuff to be improved on if he is to continue. Yeah, but like, look, I have a list of names here of, of you know, managers that are. Well, Steve, Steve's little short list from Paddy Power. <laughs> yeah. Favourites. Roy Keane's the favourite. I mean, if he comes in, what, what's he going to do different to Nothing really. Yeah, he's the mouthpiece for O'Neill. Yeah. I don't think O'Neill's right. Or I don't think um, Keane's right, but he's too close to O'Neill and everything that O'Neill's done in the last few years, and he's too loyal to a lot of players who are already <coughs> there, who I think a lot of people want to see the back of now. Um, and I don't think he'd make enough change. I think if we're going to overhaul the squad and the way we do things, there has to be nothing left from this management team and this kind of, you know, this system. It has to be a new system with a new man in charge who's allowed to pick who he wants. It can't be an agenda of the FAI. The FAI needs to look at the next manager from the perspective of, yes, maybe we won't qualify for Euro 2020 by bringing in this manager, but he will build something with a group of younger players who have very little caps and he's going to build something that come 2022 we're going to get to another World Cup it's been 20 years by 2022 it'll be 20 years since we've been to a World Cup Jeez. we have not been that bad a team like for that long. Old. <laughs> I know. we've not been that bad a team for that long we've been in contention the fact that we've never qualified for, not qualified since 2002 is a joke and that needs to change it's been the fault of Steve Staunton Brian Kerr Trapatoni Martin O'Neill, Mick McCarthy, after 2002, Thierry Henry, well, Paul McShane, to be completely honest, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> <damn duck. laughs> but, yeah, I think it has to now 
be a case of get rid of everything to do with this management team and a lot of this squad and it has to be a new squad, fresh, that is going to be together for the next six, eight years yeah, rather than for the two years. Yeah, but I see if, if Ronaldo comes into the job and does bring these players in, he's not going to get abused for losing games like he's been abused. So just, it's just no, a, ca- it's a catch when you deal with Ireland fans. It's, they want one team and they don't want the other and then when it goes either way, they're never happy. They're literally never happy. It has to be like... If, it, 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 if you would have taken, would you have taken playoff spot to start the campaign? No, but I would take this playoff spot once James Coleman got injured for the rest of the campaign. I'd say yeah. I wouldn't have taken player spot to start. I, I, w- I would have thought to qualify. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That group was easy. That group was so winnable. Yeah, absolutely. So Serbia very strong now. Serbia very strong. Uh, Ser- Serbia were a strong defensive side, but they didn't have a hell of a lot going forward, and Ireland could have capitalised on that. They just didn't. We just lost the so, If you look at our team, though, they, I know some people think we could have won the group, like, what? Our team isn't that great. Like, um, if you compare to other, t- if you compare to other teams uh, in the group, you look at the players, what level they're actually playing at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and the both. styles that they're playing. Mm. Do you yeah, know what I, don't, I, mean? I don't really agree with that no. in the sense of like oh, Serbia. Well. Serbia maybe yeah have a good like a good group of players. Mm-hmm. Wales have a lot of players who are playing the championship and not playing the Premier League. Yeah. And Austria can't play together. Mm-hmm. So we can't really look at it from the sense of. Oh, we're such an inferior group of players because we probably more players playing the Premier League than um, Wales do. Yes, Wales have Gareth Bale, but they don't have a great team. Other than that, would you take Wayne Hennessy over Randolph? Would you take Chris Gunter over Seamus Coleman? Would you take Ashley Williams over Shane Duffy? You know, that's the question. Would you even take Hal Robson Canny over Shane Long? Like you probably wouldn't. I'd say no. So. Yeah, but- they do have the Aaron Ramsey and, and Joe Allen pretty good players. Yeah, of course, but we have good players as well. Like the McCarthy and stuff, if it, I'd have James McCarthy before I'd have Joe Allen or maybe even Aaron Ramsey. There's not no talk about James McCarthy though. No, I know. Even though he's uh, Ireland's best friend in midfield at FIFA. The thing about it is, I, I was listening to, uh, I was on the road in Saturday and I was listening to uh, Today FM and Brian Kerr was on the core commentary of the Burnley game. Bring it back. <laughs> but it's funny, you know, he was talking about, you know, as, as we all know, there's a huge Irish contingent on the on the on the Burnley team, and they're all playing, they're all playing not a, a you know a Barcelona style football, but they're playing an effective Decent style of style of uh, type of football there, and all of them look very very good. They look effective. Look look at the way Sean Dice has improved Stephen Ward alone. Like Stephen Ward looked done a year two years ago. He now he's looked done. Two Tuesdays ago. <laughs> he, he, he did, to be fair, but like, yeah, one by that, game. That's a bit of a, a blip in form if you look at how he's played this season in the Premiership. Yeah, I, I get that. His club form has been. He don't score a cracking goal at Chelsea for shit. I think he's club, good club form, Brady, but I think you're probably right in what you're saying with Dice yeah. as well. That he yeah. has made a system where. Stephen Ward kind of look of yeah, effective. Look effective. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to be the best player in the world, but he he does a job in that system and he's very very effective at it. And Brian Kerr made a very interesting thing. He's like, you know, he was talking about I think it was uh, Henrik at the time, and you know, he said a little deeper control of the game for for a while there. And he's like, it's amazing how these players look when they're not looking up in the air, hoofing the ball, playing the ball back and forth. And like that was a ver- that you know it was one of those things that you hear you're like, oh, you know, the penny kind of drops. Like I largely, I've been saying that since this time. Yeah, right? I know. We, we we all have, I think. And like the thing about it is, I won't argue that that current bunch of Irish players are the best, most skillful players we've ever had. But they're by certainly not the worst type of players that we've had. And there's a lot of effective ball player midfielders in there that we didn't make advantage of. And that was one of the things that I was so annoyed with the way O'Neill went going home at halftime. There was no reason to do that. Like if you're making a change, it's complete panic. Yeah, if you're making a change, it's put long on, go to a front and put Brady back left back. That's not to change. Probably was at half time as stupid as it sounds. Is probably not change anything and just tell the players. No, I the ball's not supposed to go in the air. Yeah, it's well, supposed to go on the ground. Yeah, and yeah, that's what we have down here. Top well. Yeah, but Darren Murphy can play. Darren Murphy can play if he gets the ball to his feet. But if you're two from balls from the chase behind, you may as well have Shane Longer against Wales. <laughs> Shane Longer a horse playing. Him yeah. Like you just have something to run on. Like, well, and I think we like the the that's like you you'll, you'll say do we switch on him? Do we not switch him? What you what what I would argue towards maybe leaning away from him is I don't think he's making proper use of those players. And I see those players like you, Sean Dice, as as the example I've spoken about there. 
them players look effective and they're a very, very difficult team to beat. And, and look, th there's no reason why they can't play like that for Ireland. But, Duffy, you know, Duffy has a, Duffy a very brilliant. good uh, distribution. He looks, right, he looks amazing on Brighton uh, on, on the wall of the back. Kieran, you're sitting there seeing No, 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 no I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I'm not seeing it at all. Like, no, but I can see what you mean. Like, like apparently, uh, they, they, can, they adapt to different games, you know what I mean, like yeah. the way they are. But there's a massive difference between club football and in management. <coughs> Agreed. Agreed. Like, well, like, when you're doing your badges and that, you learn that systems take months and months and months to develop with, with a team. And you can't just switch it and change it. Do you know what I mean? This whole thing of like the Irish, Irish need to have younger players, younger players, and they need to have 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 younger and the highest level, do you know what I mean? Because the manager of Martin O'Neill, whoever it is, is brought in purely to win. That, that's it. It doesn't that's, matter how. That ethos needs to change. But it's impossible because it's if, a, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm coaching in Ireland and I'm bringing up next, whatever, it's Robbie Keane yeah. or whatever, the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to go to England. When he goes to England, he's going to go to the academy there. It's only English and Irish players in the academies, I'm sorry, Scottish, Welsh. They only led in the Irish, academies yeah, to learn. British and British, basically. Yeah, yeah, up to the bit 15. <coughs> and then what happens is all these foreign players come in. So what happens is, by the time you're 18, you're not going to make the first team. So what you do is you get shipped down to League One, League Two, and Championship, where the manager is only going to be there for maybe a year, and he has to win. So that's where it's long ball, this kind of system plays. So Irish players, you look at a team now, are in those systems where we're playing in West Brom's, Burnley's, all these different types of teams that play these types of football. I can't, as an international manager, change that. Do you know what I mean? I can't bring them in for a week of the year or two weeks of the year. I get them all to play possession football and develop them because I just don't have that time. Yeah, but I think you can. But That's I think a very you good can point. Yeah, it is. But I think you can do that in the sense of it's a longer term thing. But that these players are all, for the most part, coming through at least a twenty one to nineteen for Ireland at this yeah. point. Yeah. That's where it needs to become a system where. At 19, at 21, at senior level, even younger, 17, 16, mm -hmm. the system is the same. The way they play is the same. The way they train is the same. Everything is the same. So regardless of where a lad is playing club football or anything in the system he's playing in there, he knows when he comes into Ireland, no matter what age group he's at, he is playing in a certain system. This is how we play football. And you just do that and it continues. And yes, it takes four or five years to really implement that and get it going properly mm -hmm. to see the lads who when it starts or maybe at 19 to come to the senior team mm -hmm. but that has to happen we can't if we continue to just go short termism and just bring in players to win now mm -hmm. at all at the levels at 21s and senior level at 19s that oh we need to win games and we might not play good football we need to win games mm -hmm. you watch the 17s in the euros in the summer they played really good football they played really good possession football. They spread the ball about. They played attacking. They have, yeah, they yeah. have, yeah. and they have good players like Aaron Bulger. Go. Aaron Bulger at Shamrock Rovers, especially, has come through mm -hmm. since then, and he's been for me anyway. In the second half of the league rounds, he was the best. He was the best midfielder in it. He was unbelievable. He looks, mm -hmm. he looks like an Irish version of like a Luka Modric or something in the way he plays, mm -hmm. and it's. It, he is the player that we never produced before. He's that type of player. So, at a certain level of underage, of our underage system, they're getting it right because we're qualifying for tournaments. Even look at the twenty ones. The twenty ones are in a good position to qualify for the uh, next Euros. Mm -hmm. So it's there. The system's there, but it needs to take that next step, and the senior team need to adopt that same mentality of right. Yes, it's going to be a few years in developing how we play. Because, yeah, it takes five or six months with a club team. It might take two years with an um, international team. But it will work if you do it. There's plenty of countries have shown that. Germany have shown it. Iceland have shown it. Where if you develop a certain way of playing, regardless of if it's a positive or a negative way of playing, it will work eventually. Yeah, no, no. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. Because the, the youth system, like in terms of the way that they're coached, is fantastic. Yeah. Because I know that for a fact. And... When the players are playing in Ireland, so if they're playing for Kevin's or Francis or whatever yeah. it is, the Irish team has so much more control over the players, do you yeah. know what I mean? And a lot of the Irish coaches learn from the FEI how to coach and the systems of play, so it's very much identical. You know, yeah. in Shelburne, a lot of us coach very similar. But what happens is, when once you go across the pond, you so, like, it, the international team have so little say and control over what you do. Like, yeah, of course. Like, I know lads who play for Ireland, and nowhere in the they've been told by the clubs to tell into the international team that they've been injured. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So they don't yeah, turn up. Do you know what I mean? Like 
it's it's just secondary. Yeah, that's why it is like it's seen as complete second. Yeah. Roy Keane's even said he said yeah. lads, international football isn't as valued to lads. Well, Ferguson was notorious for that at the same time. Yeah. Roy Keane, Ferguson, yeah. yeah, he all, he's, he's he all, yeah, he all. Yeah. His players were always in the fridge. What yeah. Paul Scholes was trying to make a national football at twenty eight or something like. Yeah, that. yeah, but they were playing. I mean, probably yeah, no, he probably would stay. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Ferguson. it's it's time. But well, that's all I'm saying is it's yeah. time and it's it's um. It's on field time that you need with the lads and contact with them, which is so difficult in internationals. You know what I mean? Well, I think Shamrock, I think the kind of model Rovers have now adopted an underage level where it's very centralised and they've got a, you know, a complex and everything for an academy mm. and that is their own and everything like that. If other clubs in the league might continue to kind of develop theirs in the same way, and obviously it doesn't have to be to the same extent, but that every league of Ireland club's developing that. I think less players will go. I think more players will see, right, I stay in Ireland until I'm 19, 20. Mm. I develop here, I get an education, I play an underage for, they I'm probably playing senior games in league of Ireland at 17. Mm. So they're getting first team exposure to playing in Europe, everything like that. I think if the systems and the kind of underage systems are in place in Ireland, less players will jump across the water. So yes, players still will, but I think a lot more will choose to go, right, well, I'll stay for an extra year or an extra two years because I'm getting good coaching here, I'm playing, and I'm playing, I'm playing, you know, senior professional football. Mm -hmm. like, like the FAI just need to fund, give more funding to the League of Ireland, yeah. and then it's more of an appeal because if, you, if you're thinking to yourself, right, if I get across to England and I move up through the league or I start in high league, the chances are I'm going to make money where I can retire at the age of 35. Yeah. If I stay in this country, I'm going to have to work when I'm done. <coughs> you know yeah. mean? And that's the difficulty for lads transitioning into a normal job. Yeah, know? of course. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely. I know what you mean. Well, yeah. so so it's not only that, but it's also it's, it's that split between the, the academy and the underage setup towards the first team. Mm -hmm. At the moment, there's a massive bridge there, and you know they couldn't be they couldn't be any further apart because unfortunately yeah. the, the way we all are in this society is modern football. Everyone wants results and wants results now, mm -hmm. and there's no time being given to continue that process, which needs to be. Premier done. League's a prime example. It is Ch you, Chelsea are yeah. a prime example. <laughs> well, yeah, look how many players yeah. they sign on, on their loan system is just a farce, really. Yeah. Um, but like, you you look at there's so many managers that are you know. We'll talk about Allardyce later on, but that type of a mould of a player or of a manager, big part, and it's just it's so focused on short term. Like they do a job, they have a short term goal, and then they finish and they leave the club in a jock and they don't care, and on we go. And it's that's like unless would if we are to be successful and to continue on all that work, the, the manager of the first team has to be have a, either be heavily involved with the underage system or be the same person or whatever sort of bond you are. That. That bridge has to be narrowed, and you look at the successful teams like Paul, or you mentioned there earlier with Iceland, yeah. Germany, yeah. etc. That's all molds where <coughs> they've solved that problem, yeah, and they've fixed it. You look at the contrast with even England have still have that huge problem, uh, and they've now the only thing is yeah, England have now fixed England have now by all intents and purposes obviously we have to wait and see mm -hmm. if it transitions to senior level, yeah. but. The success they've had in the last year or two at underage level has been unprecedented for an English thing. And that's, St George's Park was opened, they centralised their coaching more, they centralised everything more, where the players are in for longer and everything like that. And it's worked, it's worked perfectly. And you now see a player like, already you see Phil Foden who's only 17 years old and coming on the Champions League for Manchester City or top of the Premier League. And that's not because oh City have no players or whatever. City have how many attacking midfielders, but he's still giving them a chance because he knows he's good enough. And the way the Premier League have brought in the real with the kind of more English players and everything like that, it now means that those players will eventually get through into the first team. Foden and stuff are proven, and even a, you know a ridiculous one is Jesse Lingard has proven at United that if you're good enough, you will get in. And he might not be the best player at United, but he'll get into the side. If you're good enough, doesn't matter where you're from, you'll get in. So I think it's more a case in England where the Irish players probably haven't been good enough to get into the team rather than that all oh, their chance have been taken by someone else. It's more they probably just haven't been good enough and that's why they've dropped down the league. Yeah. Well look, anyway, um I've been trying to come on to this for about five minutes. <laughs> so um, the other candidates, uh Big Sam Mick McCarthy, Martin Yall, Owen Coyle, Stephen King. They're the, they're the bookies' favourites in that order. 
Yeah, after Roy Keane. Stephen Kenny, you know. At the la- at, yeah. Yeah. Stephen Kenny is last. Stephen Kenny's on our li- yeah. on our standby list. Stephen Kenny. Not by. Yeah. I'm not putting him as <laughs> the last standby. Um, I think the most. That was in the order of the odds. Yeah. I think the name that you say on most is just there. Why is he there? Is Martin Yowell. But obviously he's worked with Real Doctor and stuff before, and Yowell has had success at club level as well. He's you know he did a decent job at top. Real Doctor sounds like a DJ. Sorry, Real Doctor sounds like a DJ. But um, that could. The love. That could in you know if it was another manager, not Martin Yowell, and no one who's Dutch because Dutch managers are absolute poison at this point. <laughs> regardless of what job they do in whatever country they're absolute poison because none of them have accepted that football has changed from when Johan Cruyff was coaching but he's the most interesting name on it because none of the other names apart from Stephen Kenny really excite me even a tiny bit horrible list to be fair isn't it but I think it, like the Dutch, Dutch coaches are it, when in coaching they're known as educators yeah. do you know what I mean so they're great for youth coaches so like Van Gaal he's a great educator and a teacher but well, that's not the right. But that's not the right approach for necessarily senior players. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He brought um, through, uh, that's true. Whereas yeah. Gus Hinnink is known to be the one coach who's, who's gone completely against the grain because yeah. he's he's a man manager. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas Dutch coaches aren't like that. So that's the difference in a highest level where you don't want to have a Dutch coach usually in your team. Uh, the, one other thing to point out is then like if he all is that odds and he has work with Ruud Doctor and everything like that, is there a possibility that there's some sort of an I don't really think this is going to happen because I think the FAI would go safe with their next manager because the mm. FAI. But that possibly, say, Stephen Kenny uh, madly gets the job mm. and is given a chance that someone like Martin Yall comes in as, remember what Bobby Robson was like for Steve yeah. Staunton. Where well, he that's was Dun- Dunphy Dunphy came out and said that Brian Kerr should be that person. Yeah, uh, Brian Kerr wouldn't be phase me either, but I think if you had Stephen Kenny and Brian Kerr, then you're still getting into the a lot of people going, oh, they're only league world managers and everything like that. Yeah. Well, the thing that strikes me is in uh, this book right here, Shay Gibbons' book, he speaks about Brian Garrett saying he thought he was quite out of his depth at times at international yeah. level. I've heard that a lot. Um, whereas he was going against teams where with like you know, clueless tactics and yeah. stuff like that. I actually really like Brian Kerr. I would like to see him involved in some way, shape or form. Yeah, I think they'd call like for him to... What? It's like your uncle coaching him, that's why. Yeah. Brian Kerr's like your uncle. I hate the way he talks, but I mean, I don't have to listen to him once he's on, he's not on the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I, in fairness, I hate the way he talks, but I, he, what he says usually makes sense. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind to see him involved in the setup, but ideally, who would just. Of that list. Mine is. Stephen Kenny? Yeah, mine is 100% Stephen Kenny, and obviously, Brian Kerr had the problems back then. Um, but two things that are markedly different between Stephen Kenny and Brian Kerr is Stephen Kenny would be going into an Irish setup and an Irish senior team that is full of players who have played in the League of Ireland. Like, full of lads who have played in the League of Ireland. Mm. So he's going in and instantly a lot more people know who Stephen Kenny is than know who Brian Kerr was back then. It was a lot more English lads coming over playing for Ireland back then than it is now. And the second thing being, Stephen Kenny has managed in Europe extensively in the last few years with Ireland, or with Dundalk. He has managed in the Europa League. He's managed he with Derry as well, though, didn't he? Yeah, he was in Europe with Derry as well. He was in Europe with Longford, Bowes, Rovers. Coach with Scotland. Scotland yeah, coach yeah. with Dunfermline in Scotland. Um, but he, he, he's coached against good coaches, and he's shown that he's tactically astute enough to change how Dundalk play, and he changed how they played in the Europa League against good sides like Zenit and everything like that, AZ Alkmaar even, who were a good team tactically in the way they set up and everything. And he was able to figure a lot of that out and he was able to get around. Well, Dane said teams. that Zenit were the toughest team they ever came with. Yeah, Dane well, they were, they were last season. They were a brilliant team. They are full of these Brazilians yeah, no, no, that no one went about. But he was able to make them competitive in both games against Zenit, who were a really good side in that competition. They were the favourites for the competition. Well, huh? Being exposed. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't VS Bowers. No, no, it wasn't. Was it? Well, it was Michele Lucescu, wasn't it? Yeah, Lucescu yeah. was uh, yeah. left last. Oh, well, fuck them anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, John, who would you take? I would have to agree and go along the lines of Kenny. 
uh, Stephen Kenny at that. And no Chris, uh, no Chris Hutton's not on this. But. He's, he's, he's he's too set on the bright now. I think he'd leave. Okay. Uh, so. Would you mean like who would I want or who's available? Or would you keep O'Neill? Does that make you want to? Like, look, I think anyone who comes in, it's going to be anyway. I think what will happen is no matter who comes in, as a manager, especially international manager, you go past the celebrity day after about two, three years. And any coach will tell you that at a certain point, your your words to players and that become almost um, in, in one year. Do you know what I mean? Because it's the same message Death. all the time. Yeah. Things like, it doesn't like matter who comes in, yeah. they're never going to be there for 10 years. Do you know what I mean? And, and build up this whole system and that. Uh, Stephen Kenny is a really good coach. Um, it, tactically, and very, very, very good. Um, it's just difficult when the way that he's coached, like, like Eamon Duffy made the point, goes, oh, don't talk play this way. Why don't we play this way? But that goes back he to is high-level Irish players technically playing against other Irish players who are technically equal or not as good. Whereas we are not always, not, I'm not saying we're inferior. I'm not saying that. But in the way that our players, our attributes that, that they have technically developed, yes. we they would require to be coached differently. I'm not saying he wouldn't be able to do that. Um, he could definitely probably, I, I guarantee he probably not, he would know. If you ask him now, he'd have his team written on the on yeah. a piece of paper what he would actually do. Like. Yeah. But obviously it's, it's flexible, that end of the That's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. I think he showed in Europe that he's very flexible yeah. how he can play and how he can set up the yeah. team. And that he does not always. Nice guy. Yeah. I know what he's a nice guy. Um, <laughs> That he can set up a team to be defensive, <laughs> play counter attack. Still playing me up front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, David Millen's gone, so they need someone. Yeah. Uh, Pat Holden's back, actually, so you're out again, sorry. Uh, okay, Pat. She's still working at Tesco. What? Pat Holden. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing I'm worried about, uh, the only thing that, that I've worried about all the time, whether it's Martin Neal that stays, or, I think it's tough anyway, whoever stays like or whoever comes in. Yeah. But the only thing I worry about is I don't want to wait it, the same as the Mick McCarthy year or something like that, where we wait three, four games in where we're out and then we change it. Yeah, you know it needs to be done now for making the change. That's what I don't yeah, want yeah. to happen, you know what I mean? If if Martin Neal stays and then we have a good run up until the end of the group, that that's brilliant, man. Do you so know what I mean? But I just so don't get, want get him out well it's no not in the international period yeah, and then get yeah, before. Well I would get him out before we're next in so we can pick his own squad and talk to that, yeah. Yeah, like well, Trapton is last seal. last one. We were out. Yeah. You know what I mean? By halfway through it, you know what I mean? So But I would get him out sealed as in, in the next few weeks. Because whoever the manager is coming in, say it is Stephen Kenny. There's no point in Stephen Kenny being properly focused on the dog. And then out of nowhere coming into the Ireland job at the end of January, mm. start of February, where he's going, right, I've been one to figure out all of these players who are in the setup and figure out who I want, who I don't want, what way I want to play, everything like that. If Stephen Kenny comes in in December, he has December, January, February, and most of March to figure out, right, who do I want, what players do I want to have a look at. Whoever the manager is has to have that time. If we sack on ill in the middle of February, we're on a hiding to nothing again because it's just going to be playing catch up the rest of the time. Oh, um, no one's going to ask me, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, I would take Kenny as well. Um, yeah. If we can't get Hugh, he'd be my first pick, but uh, he's probably not going to leave Brighton. Um, regardless of that, there's some uh, Sorry, exciting. One point I was going to make, but, but remember, we don't, start this, we don't start our campaign until next August. Who's to say a Premier League manager won't be sacked by May? That's a good May. point. But I'd rather if O'Neill was to go, that's cleared up in. Well, someone could get sacked in January. You know what I mean? He's, he's but in two weeks, yeah, well, not going to get sacked. Yeah. How much money will we have to dangle before the Mark does over? Like, how much money? I don't know, Everton knows can more. Mar- can, Mar- can Morris McCabe settlement be what we pay Mark O'Sullivan with for a campaign? Mm. <laughs> he's, he's very rigid. Um, lad that we worked with, uh, Joe, his best mate is, is a sports scientist in Hull. And he was mentioning how. When Mike Phelan left and then Max so, Silva yeah. came in, just completely changed. He was like, I don't care if you like these drills, if you don't like them, you're doing them because this is what's going to keep us up. And he just be like, he just, everything was so rigid and so, like, you know, positional. Do you know what I mean? It was all. That is like the mark. You, 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 you move five <laughs> yards. Yeah. You move five yards out. What are you moving now? Yeah. Take two steps back. You know what I mean? It was very, very. Original organised, like I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying. Well, we're not going to get me either way, right? That's so. <laughs> yeah, talking about these players that we have coming through that should be, you know, bled in. 
So we've got Conor Hoorahan at Villa, Liam Kelly, Enda Stevens, Matt Doherty, Greg Cunningham. Now Matt Doherty was in the in the last squad. Yeah, but Cyrus Christie somehow was just. But hang on. Anyway, you got Greg Cunningham, you got John Egan, Sean McGuire, uh, Declan Royce, Alan Brown, uh, Portsmouth, uh, Malumbi, Brighton. Sorry, what did I say? Portsmouth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Preston, I don't know. Malumbi, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Connor Ronan and Jack Brown, uh, old yeah. as well. So there is some players there. Uh, Jack Brown was highly rated at uh, City for the longest time. Now he's doing really well at Oldham. Ridiculously well at Oldham since Richie Wellens came in. Obviously being a fan of the League One club, I watch it a little bit more closely. Jack Brown has, for me, probably been the best player in the league so far this year. He's, he's head and shoulders above everyone else when he gets going. He just rips teams. He just rips teams apart. He rips good teams apart. The best teams in that league, the good defensive teams, he opens them up. He looks a player who should easily be playing at a higher level. I think it's only a matter of time. Wigan will probably recall him in January. Um, Paul Cook will probably bring him back in. Uh, Cook, obviously, as he did with Stevens, is very, very good with Irish players and getting the best out of Irish players. Um, obviously, I've worked at Sligo as well before. He'll bring him in probably back in January. He'll play with Wigan the second half of the season. They'll get promoted, barring some catastrophe. And might get then, he'll be back in the ch- then he'll be back in the championship. So once he's back in the championship, he's playing the championship for Wigan. You know, he's he's probably locked for getting a look in at some point anyway. Okay, well, he's not necessarily guaranteed because you look at Liam Kelly and he's been doing pretty well for uh, Reading. Yeah. Well, he had been. And he's not getting a look in. Yeah, Reading are doing poorly enough, but he's playing pretty well. And he's played pretty well the last year and a half. Of them. Um, he's a good young player. A kind of, little bit of a mold of West Hill, um, to be honest. But he's a lot quicker and... He's How old is he, 23? No, 20, 21. He's younger, he's quite young. He was, uh, he's been in the 21 squad okay. recently, so, but he's a player with a lot of potential. Um, and hopefully, Reading stay up and you know, they get a new manager in or whatever and they get a bump from that and Function. he's a big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everyone just laughs. <laughs> and then Paul McShane comes into the equation. The um, Sean McGuire, Declan Rice. Uh, you know, I think McGuire deserves if he's if he's fit to start the next game. Well, yeah, most leaves. definitely because you, you look at our options up front the last while, pretty much since Walters got injured, <coughs> and we've been messing around. Long's dreadfully out of form. I've scored goals since the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> certainly missed enough of them. Yeah. And then you have like Murphy, who's limited, and the worst thing that could have happened, I think, Ireland was that performance over in Cardiff with him because it just. Took him to a whole new level that we were thinking. He well, he scored two against Moldova, I think. Yeah, he did, but you know, to me, he's never the option, or he's never the answer. Um, he, he, if it was for him, you know, mm. he would, probably would have won that game. Shane Long obviously then into the system. Shane Long didn't. Um, <laughs> no, I was just saying it's obviously down to the system that Martin Neal has. He, because he has so little time to change it. You trust in him because yeah. to lead the line, do, yeah. do you know, do you know what I mean? It's very much like Trapper Tony, where he did never really changed the team, even though players were doing well Kevin outside Cole. it. Yeah, because the lads knew the system and understood. Yeah, he, so, he refused to win Colm, he didn't bring yeah. Colm to Europe. Like, that's yeah. the reason why every time Kieran Clark was getting it, he was just pinging it straight across him because obviously the system, the goal was every time you're getting it, you're trying to hit Murphy and he's playing it off to James McLean to try and get behind him. And that's obviously just what they were doing. Why did I add with Seamus to come back on that list? Yeah, this guy's obviously mm. a big thing. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. No, I was just I was just saying that that's probably why he didn't change it. Do you know what I mean? Why he yeah, didn't? I just think he's didn't so have time to change. He's so system, limited you know? as a player that it's it's very difficult. Yeah, no, I must not disagree. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're gonna get a hard on now because uh, I'm gonna say <laughs> Ender Stevens. <laughs> um. You <laughs> PG <laughs> Um. Yeah. Well, obviously you should have been. As I've been saying for well, really? since, we started, since we started this channel, um, that he should have been in the squad. I said he should have been in the squad and he's playing League Two of but to be honest. But um, he's playing really well in the Championship. He's playing every week for a good side in Sheffield United. Gets assists, he defends well. He's a, he's an exceptional player. And I think anybody who wants to leave Ireland is a champion of Rovers as well. He was brilliant at Rovers. And then he was thrown in the deep end of Villa. They got an injury crisis at left back. He made his debut away at Anf- or away in Anfield against Liverpool in the Premier League. Like he was kind of 
he was in a Villa team who weren't playing well at the time. And funny thing is, Martin O'Neill might have actually given him his debut for Villa as well. And he knows him and he, he signed him. And he still wouldn't bring him in, even though he's probably been the form left back that could play for Ireland for the last two and a half seasons now. It was mostly just to the level he's playing. He's yeah, playing. Of, of course. I don't think realistically he was ever going to be called up in League 2, but at the same time he did call up the day before when he was a Portsmouth last season. And he got game time. Yeah, I think it's different so, with a keeper though. Yeah, of course it's different with a keeper, but I think at this stage, obviously you said Stephen Moore or earlier in the video, Stephen Moore's playing well for Burnley or whatever, but Stephen Moore's 31-32. Yeah, no, it's, it's time to kind of go, right, thank you for all your service, you've done really well, but Cunningham and Stevens are here, they're about 26, or Cunningham's 25, Stevens is 26. Get the two of them in the squad and just let the two of them fight it out. They've now got friendlies in March, probably got friendlies in the summer before the World Cup. There you go, there's four or five games, fight it out, whoever plays best is the left back from the championship or come the next qualifying campaign. Those, like, those friendlies, sorry to put in there, but those friendlies, you know, I know we laugh at them, we're, you know, probably going to play five standard teams or whatever and there'll be nobody at them but they are vitally important for the next development of, of our next couple of campaigns because really. yeah. Yeah. we need to get those young players in we need to give them game time get get the use to set up the environment just get that green shirt on them and get it, used to playing in front of that big of a uh, crowd absolutely yeah, just get them in and do you know although you were saying that no one's going to turn up nobody's going to turn up but they're, they're still kind of going to bed into the environment a bit and just get used to it so it's not completely new I think it's vital yeah well they, they, they'll get into that you know Travelling on the team bus yes. and being together oh, with the team. This is the training with Ireland, yeah. 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 Well, that, that's what needs to happen. Yeah. So, I think the only person who's going to bring these players in is a new, is manager. A new manager. Is Kenny. Yeah, well, I think a new manager has to look at it, but Kenny probably will... will probably I think you're, like, yeah, you're less likely like if Sam Allen or something oh, comes well, in. Exactly. But I, think he, he, I think he'd rely on a lot of the older players. That's still, what I mean, and yeah. he'd keep them yeah. around. And, yeah. You know, some of them could, could still stay. Oh yeah, like I'm not, not saying not every single player. Oh, Shay should probably should be oh, Shay should probably say see you later. Say so, uh, Glenn Glenn Whelan. Whelan. Paul McShane. So, yeah. in the last uh, yeah. <laughs> Who else? Said, They're kind of all hanging on like, like said, some players like that. Oh, Shay, hang on, like Shay giving in the Euros, like said, War, and Robbie Keane. Like, I said Ward is Ward as well, and I know I keep banging on about. I don't think he. I don't think he, he. He's done. But I don't think he thinks One he's done. But at the same time, I think. Those two left backs are probably better options in the long term. What's the point in playing Stephen Ward for two more years? Suddenly, them two lads are 27, 28, still have next to no international experience. And then you're coming in and one of them has to play. So you may as well just get the two of them in now. And they have experience. And yes, they'll make mistakes. But I'd rather have a lad who's 26 making mistakes than a lad who's 32 making mistakes. But that, that's, I don't think that's out of the manager. I think that's out of the FBI. Because the FBI is going to say to the manager whether the objective is to qualify and win or to play a certain way. The objective is always and going to be to qualify. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, like what I'm saying, like if, you're, if you're a manager now, yeah. if I'm a manager now and I'm, I'm trying to keep the same team but next thing Stephen Ward's having a blinder like he was at the start of the season with Burnley, are you just not going to play him? Yeah, no, I, I, get, I get that. And it's the whole <coughs> performance. Sh- short, you know, term, like that, no. short term approach versus you know the long term plan. Yeah. You can't have a situation where you, you go to manager look, I want you to get blood all these players that want mm. you to, to do this and then have a whole uproar if we have a couple of bad results and then the next time you're sacked and you're back to square one again. Yeah. It's important that we are going to take the long term approach that we have all everyone and fans included have a bit of patience and like their young kids coming through, there's going to be boo there's going to be bad results, there's going to be mistakes, but that's all part of the process and you have to look at that long term option. That's key because if we keep going by with a manager for two or three campaigns, like we've seen the last couple of years, we're just going to continue in their road, we're going to continue having these conversations and we'll never really get anywhere. Yeah, and there's good players, these are good players as well, these aren't oh, I'm players who need that. loads of development, these are good players who have a little bit of experience can be good players in this team and be improvements on what we have. That's the thing. It's some not of them, some of them can play in the, in the Premiership next week. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. But that, that's what I'm talking about again. Once again, contact time. Now I'm 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 coaching Cunningham wherever it is, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm teaching the system in which I want him to play. He's waiting for a week, and next thing he goes off to whoever it is, yes, yeah, the, yeah. the press or whatever, and they're trying to survive, and they're going long, or they're, they're just sitting the whole game. Do you know what I mean? That's and it comes into me. That's saying that Cunningham and Stevens at this point in time are perfect to have been brought in because 
Stevens is playing at the top of the championship. They're winning loads of games. Preston mm. are playing top championship. They're winning loads of games. So you know it can it can work and bring in those places. But stand to the agenda of the clubs that they go off of course because obviously we're talking about now we're talking about the championship. The team's top championship doing really well and playing great football. As soon as you go up, it's completely different now. It becomes a business. You know, it's a hundred million worth to your club to stay up in that division for TV rights and that, and yeah. that money is massive and. In terms of what it feeds into the community for community coaches, um, expo- better players into your club, developing the youth structure, it's valuable the club to stay there. So now it's about survival. So now Cullen could be dropped. Yeah. Um, someone else could be brought in. Well, the only um, thing is, the, the system changes. If Cullen gets yeah. dropped, Kevin O'Connor comes in. And he's on yeah. As well, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you look at you look at Huddersfield. Huddersfield played some decent football last year, now, but you look at them against City the weekend. It was just surviving. Yeah. It was yeah. just let's just say. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, it's to extend the exposure you have with the players and how long you can get that uh, drilled into them. Whether that's three or four years, that's fine by me. But are Irish people really going to accept that? You probably, mean, you're probably. still going to be interviewing people yeah. outside, this, yeah. outside of Eva. I guarantee you're going mad. Like, do you mean if, you lose if, they, if they actually decide to uh, come over and talk to you? Yeah, if we could be four years down the line and we'd yeah. still be stopping people, recording them and asking them questions and they'd be calling for Wes Hill and come back to the first day house of Blackpool. That could that Black <laughs> Wes Hilton is the modern day Andy Reid, I tell you. Absolutely. Because yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. even though he has to move on from one guy yeah, to another guy, to next some saviour. Robbie Brady. Nah, nah, I can't see him being a big fan of Robbie Brady. There's a question for you listeners. Who's going to be the next Eamon Duffy Love Child? Yeah. John Charles. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... Call for Charles back into the squad. So <laughs> Brady, can you still play with that? <laughs> Look, yeah, you can well, sit Lane Brady in front of the back four and play balls. Baller. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we've been kind of... Kind of drag that on a little bit longer than we we talk, but it's been two weeks worth of, of discussions that we kind of wanted to get off our chest. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments, and uh, if you have any other opinions, get in touch with us, or if you would like to come on the couch, um, get in touch. And also, we're aiming for 1,000, 1000 subscribers uh, before Christmas, and we're at eight hundred and sixty now, so we only need one forty. So. I don't know. I don't care if you to create fifty fake accounts. Tell your mom to subscribe. Get your granny to fucking subscribe. I don't give it. Just subscribe and uh, get us there. We're gonna have a big Christmas giveaway. We've got prizes and stuff like that. So the quicker we get to a thousand, the quicker uh, the giveaway will um, happen. Hoping to get done uh, for, in time for Christmas. People can have it as presents. Um, so there you are. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Thanks very much for coming on, guys. Thank you. Hashtag free and <laughs>